and our top focus we're on right now. Hamas and Egyptian mediators have said that they were going ahead with talks in Egypt on securing a ceasefire in Gaza. Israel's decided against sending a delegation as Washington pressed again for a truce, the release of hostages and plan to increase the humanitarian aid in Gaza as of now. The ceasefire talks are billed as a final hurdle on the way to securing a ceasefire in time for the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which begins on Sunday. Israel has declined to comment publicly on the Egypt talks. Two Egyptian security sources said that mediators were in touch with the Israelis, allowing negotiations to continue despite their absence. A Palestinian source close to the talk said that the discussions remained uneasy with Israel sticking to its demand for only a temporary truce to free the hostages. Hamas is seeking assurances that the war would not start up again. The White House stated that a temporary ceasefire was extremely important to a hostage deal and urged Hamas to accept the terms currently on offer. In a sign of strain between Washington, D.C. and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's right-wing government, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris on Monday hosted Benny Gantz. The administration said in a statement that Harris discussed the urgency of achieving a hostage deal and expressed deep concern about the humanitarian conditions in Gaza. Now, Gantz is a longtime Netanyahu rival who joined his war cabinet in a national unity pact at the war's start. Netanyahu has not been invited to Washington since returning to office a year ago. White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby said that U.S. is still hopeful to conclude a ceasefire for hostages deal by the start of Ramadan. But Hamas had not yet agreed on the terms which are offered to the militant group. Now the proposal consists of a truce of about 40 days during which militants would free around 40 hostages in return for some 400 detainees from the Israeli jails. We're talking about Palestinian prisoners who are still in Israeli jails. Israel would pull back from some areas, more aid would be allowed into Gaza and residents would be permitted to return home. But the deal did not appear to address directly a Hamas demand, which is a path for a permanent end to the ongoing war. Nor does it resolve the fate of more than half the remaining hostages. Israeli men excluded from agreements covering women, children, the elderly and the wounded. Israel says it will not end the war until Hamas is eradicated. Hamas says it will not free all its hostages without a deal that ends the ongoing war. The Egyptian security sources said that the mediators were trying to bridge the gap with guarantees to Hamas on future peace talks and to Israel on the safety of hostages. A Palestinian official close to the negotiations disputed the U.S. contention that Israel had agreed to the deal and Hamas was holding it up. The official told news agency Reuters that this appeared aimed at deflecting blame from Israel should the talks collapse. Now, the war erupted after Hamas fighters burst into Israel on October 7th, killing 1,200 people and kidnapping over 250 hostages. Well, on Monday, a team of UN experts reported that there were reasonable grounds to believe sexual violence, including rape and gang rape, occurred during the attacks on Israel on October 7th. Since then, Israel has sealed off the Palestinian enclave, stormed most of its towns and pounded it from the sky. Palestinian authorities say that more than 30,000 people have been confirmed killed, with thousands more made homeless. The United Nations says that hundreds of thousands face famine. Israel recalled its ambassador to the UN as tensions erupted over the handling of allegations of sexual assault by the Hamas militants. Israel has accused the United Nations of taking too long to respond to the claims. At the heart of the increasingly bitter row 
is the embattled UN agency for Palestinian refugees. It has already seen funding pulled by multiple Western countries after Israel accused about a dozen of its employees of involvement in the October 7th attack. Well, on Monday, UNRWA said that the members of its own staff had been tortured by Israel, even as the Israeli military said that the agency had employed more than 450 terrorists.